Seems like dreams like I've always had Should be, would be making me glad Why am I blue? It's up to you to explain I'm thinking maybe, baby I'll go away Someday, some way You'll come and say It's you I need You won't be pleading in vain Hi everybody Welcome to Sunday with Allie and uh, it had to be you that brought me out of the hospital and here to do Sunday with Allie for March 31st. Happy Easter, all my friends who celebrate and welcome to the Barbara Streisand video cast. Uh, something about the timing of our video cast, I seem to manage to get into the hospital and out of the hospital in between my broadcasts. Um, anyway, this has been a particularly rough week for me. I know I've, I've told you guys before that sometimes uh, between my uh, chemotherapy and related illnesses caused by the chemotherapy, my health is not so great. Uh, I certainly have been better as you can watch through the year a lot of my Sunday with Allie broadcasts, I've been doing a lot better. Right now, we're a little bit down and out, but, but, we are not dead yet. <laughs> so as long as I'm able to, and as long as uh, you guys are still interested, rooting for me, caring about me, loving Barbara the way I do, we're going to keep on doing this, and we're going to keep on uh, making it happen. So uh, without further ado, Let's talk a little Barber news, right? Where's, where's my list? There's my list. Uh, so it's a very interesting week. Speaking about Easter, it might interest you guys to know that a Funny Lady was a movie that was released on Easter. Uh, those were the days when there were still big movies released for holiday weekends. And I remember that there was a whole big promotional kit sent out to theater owners announcing that Barbara Streisand was back as funny girl Fanny Bryce in a new movie called Funny Lady. Now, I'm sure most of you guys do know that before Funny Girl, before Funny Lady was finally called Funny Lady, they were going to call it a very funny lady. But I guess they decided that that was a little bit too, I don't know, too many words. So they just went from funny girl to funny lady. And as Barbara said, if she ever did another version of Fanny Bryce's life, it would be funny grandma. And I don't think she's going to do it, so I don't think we have to worry about it. Uh, there was a really interesting PBS special that was on recently uh, called uh, The History of the Broadway Musical. I think that was the name of it. And they did a whole sequence on Fanny Bryce, which if you get a chance to see it, you'll see how really similar her and Barbara were, especially when she, when Fanny did the, uh, she did a thing, Becky, at, it was called Becky at Becky the Ballerina, which was not unlike Swan Lake. And then she did the takeoff on Martha Graham with the modern dance outfit. And, uh, you know, it was really interesting. Now, when, when Fanny sang My Man, though, uh, she didn't sing it anything like Barbara, or Barbara didn't sing it anything like Fanny. Uh, but nonetheless, interesting if you want to, you know, go back and check that out, or it's on PBS stations everywhere, eventually, some pledge drive, so you might get to see it. Uh, now, in the Barbara news for the past week, Barbara announced a second show in London on June 3rd. So as it's currently situated, unless further dates are announced, Barbara is going to be touring from June 1st to June 20th. Now that's just about three weeks. That tells me that Barbara's got more than enough time to finish touring and get back to America and get to work on Gypsy. And I'm, you know, somebody, somebody wrote a very nice posting 
on the Warrior Message Board that the best news that I could hear to make me smile and be happy and feel better would be for Barbara to finally make the big announcement about Gypsy so I can finally stop telling you all that the big announcement is coming. <laughs> it is still coming. It's going to happen. Barbara's next movie will be Gypsy. Not a very funny Gypsy, but Gypsy. Anyway, uh, there was some sad news yesterday regarding the uh, somebody who Barbara worked with in the music industry, Phil Ramone. Phil Ramone passed away at the age of 79. Uh, Phil Ramone is well known for having worked with people like Paul Simon, Quincy Jones, uh, Billy Joel. He, he got a Grammy for Just the Way You Are. But he had a long history of working with Barbara and a very, very fruitful and dynamic relationship. They started working together uh, when he did the sound for Happening in Central Park. When Barbara wanted to sing live for Star is Born, she called Phil Ramone in and he worked on it. And when she did Yentl, Phil Ramone was there to work on that album. Also, when she did her duet with Frank Sinatra, which as many people know, Sinatra didn't actually sing with anybody in the studio. Uh, he, everybody was recorded separately. Phil Ramone was behind that, making sure that everything came together and sounded real and sounded together. And so Barbara worked with Phil Ramone again on that. Uh, there was a really good quote by posted on the Barbara board, the Barbara News message board, by Dutch. And it's from a Billboard interview with Phil Ramone. And I thought I'd read it to you because I thought it was a great quote about Barbara and working with Barbara on A Star is Born. So listen to this. Uh, the, the guy, the interviewer had asked, uh, oh, there's my dog Bailey. Hi, Bailey. You see Bailey sticking her little head out there? Anyway, the interviewer had asked if uh, he had, if Phil had any great stories of working with Barbara. This is what he said. Yes, there's a great story dating back to A Star is Born. Barbara had stopped performing in front of an audience for many years and there was an important moment in the film where the main character goes up late for a show, the crowd is angry, and she goes out there to sing and she wins the audience over. While the scene was being shot, backstage some people were wondering whether she should do it live because she insisted on not having anything pre-recorded. I looked at her and thought, quote, this is her moment. And end quote. And she went out there and there was this big cheer. When she opened her mouth to sing, the crowd just melted. There were about 50,000 people there in a big stadium and it was all live. You could see the emotion on her face. It was one of the most spontaneous and creative moments you could ever experience. Barbara. That's how Phil Ramon remembers her. And remember, Phil knew. Phil had been in Central Park. He'd seen Barbara in front of 135,000 people. He knew that when she turned on the light and she sang, she could pull it off and nobody needed to worry. Uh, Barbara also issued a quote about Phil Ramon's death and I'll read it to you now. I'm so sad to learn of Phil's passing. We worked together in 1967 when I did a free concert in Central Park. His brilliance at capturing sound was immediately evident. Later, we worked together on the film A Star is Born, where Phil was able to record me singing live, including Evergreen. In the next decade, we worked on the soundtrack of Yentl and many other recordings. Phil had impeccable musical taste, great ears, and the most gentle way of bringing out the best in all the artists he worked with. The monumental recordings he produced will endure for all time. Very nice. Uh, speaking of people who worked with Barbara, coming up uh, in just a couple of weeks, Sue, the Sue Menger's uh, one-woman one show called, uh, I think it's called I'll Eat You Last, starring Bette Midler and written by John Logan, is going to open on Broadway. I think April 2nd is the previews, and then it's going to go, uh, I guess, you know, the, the actual opening date is, of all dates, April 24th. Now, Barbara's going to be in New York on April 22nd for the Lincoln Center tribute. So, will Barbara be curious enough to go see the Sue Menger show with Bette Midler in it? Could be. We'll see. 
Uh, one other interesting story popped up this week, at least interesting to me. The outfit that Barbara wore in uh, Owl and the Pussycat, Doris's modeling outfit with the hands on the boobs and the heart on the crotch, uh, apparently, other people have sort of stolen that idea of the hands on the boobs, including Yoko Ono designed something like that and uh, some other designer. And now there's a lawsuit because somebody in Brooklyn is claiming that they own the design. Now, in Owl and the Pussycat, the outfit that Doris wore was designed by Anne Roth, who was the uh, wardrobe mistress, the costume designer. So it'll be curious to see if that... Uh, if that story has any uh, legs to it or not. Uh, I'm really, really behind on all the Blu-ray Blu releases, folks, so I'm really sorry that I can't give you a lot of good information about that. I do know that the Dolly Blu-ray came out. Uh, it got a good review in Entertainment Weekly. I don't think there were any extras. And according to what I've heard, the preview for the Funny Girl Blu-ray also doesn't include any big extras. So. Uh, Blu-ray, while might be a better picture, it doesn't like it doesn't sound like we're getting any any goodies, anything to worth worth going out and buying a Blu-ray player if you don't already have one, like me. Uh, anyway, uh, I thought I would share a little memorabilia before I go. I'm, I know this is kind of a shorter uh, Sunday with Allie. I hope you understand why, but I at least had some time to pull a little memorabilia to share with you, starting with yet another. Blue Marble Egg. Uh, I sort of stumbled upon this one in my house. I don't even know where I had it. This is sort of a turquoise Blue Marble Egg. And it has no stand, but uh, I'm gonna crack it open. Anyway, Blue Marble Egg, perfect gift for any Streisand fan. Uh, now, I got a couple of little press kits to show you. This one I think came out for, uh, this came out for the release of Nuts on, I think it was the video release. Anyway, it doesn't show much. It's mostly Barbara as Claudia, looking lovely, <laughs> looking bedraggled, and a little bit of information inside and a kind of cheesy little, you know, thing. I thought they could have done more, you know? It's like, come on, give us more. But, you know, at a certain point, press kits became less important as everything became more electronic. Now here's a much nicer press kit. This one came out for Back to Broadway. And as you can see, he did a very, very nice cover, special folder. On the inside was the black and white photo of Barbara by Farooz Zahadi. And some nice information about the album, as you can see here. Sort of a uh, the old-fashioned way. Everything was typed up, and you could see what it looks like. And uh, nothing particularly new or different. Mostly a lot of the information that came out before, plus Barbara's bio. But the whole package is really nice, and it's completely original. As you can see, this photo is not a reproduction. It is from the original press kit. So that's really nice. And we'll put that over here, back in the folder. Uh, now, there was an artist, and I can't remember the fellow's name. Forgive me for saying, for not remembering. But he was very busy in 1996 doing all kinds of images of Barbara, mostly for Just Like Butter magazine. So I thought I'd share some of these images with you, because I, I think they're fantastic. Here's Barbara and Omar from uh, you, Are uh, you Are Woman, I Am Man. There's Barbara winning the Oscar. You can see this guy had a really good eye for Barbara. And while he made her funny caricatures, he never made fun of her in his caricatures like that. Uh, here's Hello Gorgeous, right? And then here is the Concert 94, that hair, lovely. Uh, now this is the mirror has two faces, evil, evil Rose, Rose with a good figure and a nasty disposition. No, she really didn't have a nasty disposition. She's just in the little black dress looking gorgeous. And then here is, I'm trying to figure out, I think this one goes this way. No, 
Could it go that way? No. I'm trying to figure out how he wanted this one to go. It is obviously Barbara as uh, Doris, Wilgus, Waverly, Wanderley, no, <laughs> uh, Washington. Uh, I will not be just called a thing. So I thought those were very cute. And uh, now this is something interesting. There was, uh, there's a British, um, British, Australian Barbara fan group called the Australian Barbara Streisand Association. And they put out this newsletter magazine. This one comes from 1997. That's Barbara, obviously a reproduction from the George magazine cover. And uh, you can see that while they didn't have great, you know, uh, printing techniques, they had a lot, a lot of information about Barbara, a lot of good stories and stuff. And uh, so this is kind of an interesting artifact. I don't know how often this stuff comes up. Uh, here's some another artist named uh, Paolo Cassetti, who did interesting images of Barbara that they featured. And uh, these pe these guys down under Mark Bellison Group, they did a really nice job. And so this their magazine was called The Voice. And actually, in 1997, they did Barbara Streisand, a Barbara Streisand convention. Pretty nice. And this was all before Barbara went down to Australia for Timeless. Uh, now, here's another interesting artifact. Here is the, uh, I think this is, let's see, this is a Spanish single of Left in the Dark. It's a little, you can see it's uh, got a little imperfection here, but it is the original single. And on the back, you can see they have some, you know, interesting write-up. They have the uh, lyrics in English for Left in the Dark and, uh, no, actually it's just, yeah, they don't have the lyrics for Here We Are at Last. Hmm, interesting. Anyway, so that's here. Let me see if I can show you the actual disc so you can see it. Here's the actual disc for Left in the Dark. And it says that this is a, a promotional disc, prohibited for sale. So that's kind of a nice little accoutrement. There's actually nothing on the other side. No grooves on the other side. So uh, this is, obviously, this, this isn't actually, now that I think about it, no, the reason there's no lyrics for Here We Are at Last is because it's only Left in the Dark. And uh, losing my hat here. Finally, uh, this was really fun. This was from uh, 2000. This was from the New York showing of Timeless. And it was a little program that some people were able to get uh, in Madison Square Garden. And uh, it's Barbara looking beautiful in her big outfit that she sang the main event in. Strangest outfit to sing the main event in. But this was a beautiful little program. And of course, on the inside, there was, you know, sort of a rudimentary story about Barbara. Of course, uh, ah, there it is. Beautiful. Barbara Streisand on stage. Lovely. So, that's it for show and tell. You already saw my little Bailey. And these are some goodies. Uh, and as I mentioned last week, and somebody took me up on it, if, if there's any of this stuff that you might be interested in buying or making a donation to my Nothing's Impossible Fund, and if I can, you know, make a deal to send this back to you, I certainly will. Most of this stuff is uh, extras in my collection because my collection is, uh, you know, it's not going to be doing me any good if I don't get healthy and I need to get healthy. So if anybody's interested and wants to make a donation, go to the... Nothing's Impossible site. Let me find my page to show you that. There it is. There you go, folks. Oh, nothing's Impossible Project.blogspot.com. And if you can help me out, terrific. And if you can't, you're still terrific. And at uh, 1928, I'm going to wrap this up and hope to get it up. And uh, still make it by uh, before April 1st, although it's all probably April 1st in some parts of the world. Anyway, hopefully next week I'll be doing a lot better. I'll have better, better look and color. I know I'm pale as a ghost. Uh, I look like Fanny after the talcum powder in her face, right? <laughs> Until then, 
This is Allie Waldron signing off, saying I'll see you next week. And hopefully we'll have the Big Barbara Gypsy announcement or something else equally fun because Barbara's been coming up with great stuff. I mean, not a week goes by that we don't have something to talk about, right? Right? Of course, right. So until then, this is Allie Waldman. Keep giving me those positive vibes, everybody. They really, really do help. And I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.